Hi guys, Jay here from borntoproduce.com. So we're going to be recording guitar parts, a singer and all that jazz later on in the course. But now what we want to do is get a musical foundation for our track. And that means coming up with a basic chord structure. Lovely. Don't panic if you have no music theory knowledge at all. There are some really great tools for this built into Cubase already and they're super easy to use. They're also really powerful as you'll see. So strap in and let's do this. The first thing we need is an instrument to be able to play. For this, we're going to use a sample that comes in the work files of this tutorial. If you're watching this on YouTube and have not yet bought the course and don't have the work files, don't worry. In the description, you'll find a link to download the samples you need to be able to follow along. So download them, unzip them and find an easy place on your computer to store them. Your desktop might be a good idea, for example, and do the same if you have the full work files. Now we just need to locate them, so let's go to the media tab in the right hand zone. Just click the home button to go back to the beginning and then go to file browser, which shows you the file system of your computer and navigate to wherever you have unpacked the work files. Mine is on the desktop. So click on your audio folder and you'll see all the samples there available. Now we want BTP HT1 Pluck. O1C, which is this one here. This is from our very own House Tools One sample pack, which has over 700 megabytes of absolutely awesome and usable samples like this one. The link to that is below if you want to check that out. Okay, so we're going to right click again and create sampler track like you did in the previous lesson. And this time in the lower zone, we're going to click chord pads. So chord pads is really great for just jamming and coming up with ideas and it allows people who have no music theory knowledge at all to make really, really cool chord progressions. And as you'll see as this tutorial unfolds, once you have a basic chord progression, you'll be able to make loads of other musical content really, really easily just from that one chord progression. As you can see from the lower zone, there are several chords loaded into the pads already and you can start playing around. Just make sure you have the track that you want to play selected. In this case, it's our sampler track. If it sounds a little bit too low in pitch, like it does in this case, what we'll do is we'll go back to sampler control and just increase the pitch by 12 semitones, which is a whole octave. Back to chord pads. Now it should sound a little bit better. And that's much better sounding now. It's just a little bit loud, so let's just turn that down. So if you're finding this tutorial helpful so far, please do consider smashing that like button and hitting subscribe. So Cubase has many, many chord presets that you can choose from. It's really, really helpful. Just click here and click Load Chord Pads Preset. And if you need chords from a particular scale, you can select them here and play with all the relevant chords for that scale. We want the D sharp scale. So I'm going to double click that. The D sharp major scale is technically referred to as the E flat major scale, but you don't need to worry about that. That's just for this tutorial. When you're making your own music after you've completed this course, you can use whichever scale you like. So we can start playing the pads and experimenting with the different chords and trying to find a good progression for our track. When you find something you like, you can simply click and drag the pad into your arrangement, onto your sampler or instrument track, and there you can see the chord. One tip for you, if you are totally new to making chord progressions and have no music theory knowledge at all, it's always best to start the chord progression with the one chord and end your chord progression with a four or a five chord. This just sounds better and helps the chord progression resolve properly. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about. This will all be explained to you later on in the course. Just know that in chord pads, the one chord is always this pad on the left hand side. But I will say this, whilst you don't have to have any music theory knowledge to be able to make a chord progression using tools like chord pads, it really does help. Not just because it will help you come up with better and more powerful chord progressions, but it will enable you to take a basic chord structure like the one we are making and manipulate it into something that is truly one of a kind. And that sounds amazing to listen to. If you already have some music theory knowledge, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But if you're totally new to it and don't know where to start, 
I highly recommend you check out our Music Theory for EDM Producers course as this will teach you right from the very basics right through to having a completely unique full musical structure for your tracks. So definitely check that out if you're new to Music Theory and want to know more. So back to chord pads, there's a couple more options here that we can talk about and that are really useful. Click on this button to bring up the chord assistant. This gives you a proximity and circle of fifths helper chart, which shows you what chords are more likely to work with your one chord, which is at the bottom here. So for example, the ones close by are more likely to work with your one chord. Again, you can drag and drop your chords into the arrangement if you want to. So let's have a little play around with the proximity helper and see if we can get something sounding good. Okay, so we're gonna go E flat, C minor, drag that in, G minor, and B flat, and we can close down the helper for now. Now at the moment we've got four individual blocks. What we wanna do is just glue them together. So I'll highlight them all, get my glue tool, and just click anywhere in that space, and then right click to go back to the normal object selection tool. So now we just wanna make this a little bit longer to coincide with our kick drum loop region. And we've now got space to put in some extra chords as well in the second half. So let's go into the MIDI part and have a look at the notes we've got. Just make this a little bit bigger. Zoom out using G. So what I'm gonna do is highlight them all. You can either drag a box around the whole lot or press Control or Command A. And we're just gonna shorten off all these chords to one beat. So they're much more snappier. So let's extend this chord progression a little bit more and make it a bit more interesting. So just gonna copy the one chord across. So I've highlighted all three notes. Hold down Alt or Option on a Mac. So just to make this second half a bit different, I'm going to mess around with the chords we've got and just change the order and the timings a little bit. So just something to note that this chord is actually the same as this one, it's just being played an octave down. So the way to move a chord up or down an octave is just to highlight it, press shift on your keyboard and either the up or down arrow at the same time. So there it is where it was before and I've just moved it down. So just gonna add one final touch to our very simple chord progression. So I'm just gonna slightly alter this chord here and I'm gonna change it into what is called a sus2 chord. And all we do is drop down the middle note, one note in the scale. Now it sounds like this. Now in this beginner's course, I'm not gonna go into why, that's all covered in the Music Theory for Electronic Music Producers course. So definitely check that out if you want to be able to write your own killer melodies. But by making this a sus2 chord, we've changed the feel slightly of the progression and it takes it from being something that could be a little bit robotic or generic to something that sounds a little bit different with a bit more emotion. Rhythmically, this is pretty simple, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. And how we're gonna do that is just to change the timing a little bit. All these chords are on the bar and they're just a little bit boring. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the second, the fourth by holding down control or command, the sixth chord and the last chord. And I'm just gonna move them over half a beat. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more and move them over. And let's just see how that has affected things. And I'm gonna put the kick in for a timing reference. That's quite a big difference and it jazzes it up quite a lot. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be making many, many more musical parts from this progression and modifying them later on in the course. I hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and hit the bell for more useful videos. Oh, and don't forget to save your project as we don't want any computer crashing situations now, do we? See you later.